This is a HeadGum Podcast. This week on the program, this movie gets by on the horrendous jackets alone. It's cool as ice. I'm Andrew Jupin. Steven Sadak. Eric Siska. Strawberry Cabin. And we hate movies. Welcome to We Hate Movies. Thank you for tuning in. As always, that's right. We finally got around to this fucker. It's Cool as Ice from 1991, directed by David Kellogg, director of previous episode, Inspector Gadget, multiple nice. music videos, and several Playboy video specials. <laughs> Have we done all his narratives now, out of curiosity? We had, I think so, yes. There's only two. So, yes. <laughs> knocked out the narratives right. of David Kellogg. Now, but how would people feel about us doing those Playboy videos on the side order of sleaze? Oh, I'm sure there's a bunch of fucking perverts out there that want us to review skin <laughs> videos. Well, it's dude. just like, okay, uh, so then she goes in front of this waterfall, right? And it's like, what? <laughs> what is with the oil being poured on her back? Well, <laughs> That doesn't work. We there could do was... uh, the Michael Jackson jam video. Oh, yeah, side yeah. Of our <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I think legally we would have to do, by the way, legally you have to drink when you're talking about cool as ice. That's oh, yeah. Idea, I'm sure. We're all cracking um, open because guess what, <laughs> absolutely. folks? Fuck <laughs> I it. heard those cracks and I cracked too. Hey, it's man. 530 fuck fucking it. whistle, man. Hey, I will say this, though. Uh, not only do you have to be drinking to talk about this movie, you definitely better be fucked up on something when you're watching it. And whether that's booze or whether that's fucking flour or whether you are just huffing spray paint. I Because I watched this sober this morning and I was like, what am I doing with Huge my life? Huge mistake. Huge I, mistake. No, I know. And I mean, the only other time I watched this was in the old Astoria days, back in like the early baby days of uh, WHM. You but know? I do, I do really think the spray paint's the way to go with this one. Oh yeah, <laughs> I think that's the one you really need. This is a party movie. Speaking you know? of, can I ask, have I seen this movie before? Because yeah. I swear that I haven't. I'm telling you, Steve, the four of us were watching this movie okay. at the old Astoria apartment. I swear to God, you were next to me on that bad futon. It I happened. Mean, Don't tell me it didn't happen. The real question is, do you remember? No, no. Oh, no. Li that literally, yeah, yeah. I, everything was brand new to me last night. I swear to God. I had one section that was brand new to me, and I'm... I'm going to go out on a limb here, everybody, and say that it was a complete and total green out situation. I had zero memory of child kidnapping in this movie. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that was a pleasant surprise. Well, something one. had to happen. This movie's got <laughs> nothing going on. Absolutely. Something had to nothing. break the window. Something had to break the stereo. <laughs> Somebody had to ride the motorcycle in the desert. Somebody had to hang out at the abandoned that, construction site. That's where we should start, really, is it does... It, Take the romance angle out of this. Okay. They relate to him much as if he is Howard the Duck. Yeah, he's, <laughs> or, yeah, he's a total or, alien. Or, or a mischievous dog. <laughs> um, <laughs> one or the other. It's like, like there's one part where the uh, girl, uh, Kathy, says, like, he doesn't know what he's doing. And I'm like, that's what you would say to Beethoven. <laughs> that's what you exactly would say to Beethoven. <laughs> <laughs> to add on to this theory of yours, Chris, when they're driving through this suburban town and th there's a bunch of like older people, like a businessman, a guy in his riding mower and a little kid and they're all gawking at at him and and the whole gang like they are from outer space well, dude I, like there's a thing on the imdb tribune trivia that says that this is like a loose remake of the wild one and i'm like bullshit. no this is a fucking loose remake of the man who fell to earth dude <laughs> well he even says when they're at that construction site right when before uh, i i can see that they get it on at that construction site they're oh like, yeah they're getting mm -hmm. it wet there's she loses her virginity stuff. she loses her virginity that afternoon guaranteed but uh he's sitting and one of the only times he ever reveals stuff about himself is like being sensitive or whatever and he's like so what's it like and she's like what having parents yeah and, like, and i mean like that is i mean i guess it's supposed to be like he's uh what he called a hard scrabble like he didn't grow yeah. up with anybody but it just really sounds like so what's it like converting like food into energy <laughs> yo like, i was hatched from an egg kid <laughs> 
better yeah, what's movie? it like being like mostly water and shit? My mother was a large chicken beast. <laughs> Hatched me in the middle of a field. <laughs> Yo, my heart is in my ass, son, because that is the physiological makeup of my alien race, bitch. I have never had a haircut. This is how it came out from the beginning. Oh Dude, my God. These are haircut. actually horns. What? Dude, this we got to talk about this haircut. I know. He's like mackle less. Oh, oh my god. god. Oh my god. Oh my fucking god. Holy shit, did confetti fall in your house too when that happened? <laughs> no, I just shit my pants. We you know, we have to have fun while we're in quarantine. Oh right? sure. Oh, actually, you know what though? But the Mac Lilles is actually pretty funny. Thank you. <laughs> and this episode might be either twenty six minutes long or three hours. I'm not sure. <laughs> hey, we'll see, man. I think the running time of the motion picture itself is around ninety three. Dude, but that's a lie. Like Chris said, because yep. we don't start. We start with this music video that the movie proper starts six minutes in. And then it takes th- th- then like seven minutes before the credits, you get another music video. So there's really like, what is that? Like 70 something minutes of like, quote unquote, story. And, and, and then the last the whole last 10 minutes are a music video. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's it's crazy. It's like this movie is like 19 montages strung together with bad jackets and shitty music. <laughs> I, w- I will say they have to have this beginning. They have their uh, the biggest stars in the scene. It's Naomi Campbell. Dude, the credit yeah. is fuck. Uh, dude, I got a real a, a cackle out of special appearance by Naomi Campbell. Okay, thanks for gracing us with your presence. She, she says hi to him. Yeah, like that's yeah. literally it. That's the whole thing. And he's he's dancing around in this video. It's a, you know like a lot of music videos in the early '90s in some abandoned factory. Oh sure, uh, a CNC music factory, possibly. Oh the right. Oh yes. <laughs> oh yes. The old CNC music factory that burned down forty years ago. But it kind of looks like the set of when he did the ninja rap in Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Yes, it definitely does, yeah. dude. The turtles were hanging out backstage, blowing rails, waiting for him yeah, to finish yes. the set. Uh, the CNC Music Factory uh, constantly asked if you could feel the vibration. Those were the flames. <laughs> <laughs> they made us dance all the time. Dude, he's dancing with his baseball cap on, and it's that obnoxious trend of... Leave the tag on, man. I mean that that kind of came back. That that, that not kind of that hugely came back like the last couple of years. I haven't seen it in a little bit. Not that I'm on the pulse of anything, but this was like especially egregious. Where it's like it's flapping like it's like pretty much like a flap to the hat. Almost. Yeah, you're making a baseball cap into like a little beanie. Versus now, where it's like a sticker or something. Yes, yeah, so you, like you that. keep the sticker on to show it's official, et cetera. Which, Either I mean, way, it's, it's very it's, gross. It's, yeah, so, I guess so I'm dumb. also against the flap cap. <laughs> <laughs> I guess uh, so. <laughs> we should point out, by the way, another shocking credit is that the director of photography on this movie is Janusz Kaminski. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Fucking Spielberg's dude. <laughs> yeah, it he looks they, gorgeous. They tapped, him, they tapped him for Schindler's List because he already filmed atrocities. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of experience. It's. I mean, this movie because of that. It's. It's illegal how good this movie looks. Like it has no business looking this good. He's having a lot of fun too. Like the those dark scenes with just like the flashlights going everywhere. He's having a lot of fun. Absolutely. Now here's my question though. So this music video. Vanilla Ice is vanilla icing all over the cake. And uh, my question is, him as this character of Johnny, right? Mm. Is Johnny like a performer or are we like not acknowledging that every once in a while this dude is just singing a song? No, I think he's a, <laughs> I think he's a rapper. I think the idea is there a rap band going town. Ta- I mean, and again, I'm making all this up because none of this is even remotely explained uh, in this film. Right. Uh, they're is- a rap band going, going town to town doing stuff. And rap- when... Uh, and watch out when they break down, because if one of these <laughs> motorcycles break down, then guess what? He decides to feed on the young women of the town. <laughs> and he's like 24 when they're making this movie. So, but like, she's a senior in high school. It's a little, it's still a little. Yeah, a no, little. They, they definitely have sexual intercourse in that fucking uh, the field. Uh, the field there. Yeah, yes, but he absolutely. preys on the town folks' children. <laughs> yeah, well, an alien's got to eat, dude. Yes. And I, I'm going to push back a little bit on the band. The rap troubadours. Okay. <laughs> That's what I think we're dealing with here. Because yeah, it doesn't you're right. seem like he has like a career or that he has reports to anybody. 
no, to like well, he's, get I something think, going. Well, that's the thing, dude. They will rap anywhere, anytime. So it's like a legitimate club or a fucking warehouse or yeah. in front of those old people's garage. So, yeah. so he's like a medieval bard. <laughs> yeah, he's like the it's like the actors from the Seventh Seal. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Welcome back to giving them more credit than they ever deserved. <laughs> oh, shit. We wound up at this castle. We've been dead the whole time. Yo, damn. <laughs> oh, yo, oh death, God. this chess game is whack. <laughs> yo, damn, death. son. We got consumed by the Black Death. <laughs> yo, death's on the beach. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yo, 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 fam. Let's run up this hill with the people's choice. <laughs> oh, my God. Yo, yo, for real. You know how to play chess? I, I don't know. I don't know. No. Oh, Yo, shit, it's I like checkers I, with horses. I think I died in that storm. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> but I do. Oh, that's another fan. And I, I very rarely go in for fan theories and films. But when there's nothing in the movie, I think he might be dead the whole time. I think every, like, cause everything is so it's like Tim Burton. Uh, uh, what do you call it there? Um, it's like otherworldly. Sis- yeah. Edward, Edward Scissorhands ask this like suburb. You know yes, what I mean? It very much is. And that like the first. Uh, let's say, I don't know, 15 minutes of this movie when you're trying to, like, your brain is trying to adjust to what the tone is. And yeah, it's kind of like the town from Edward Scissorhands, but, like, even fucking weirder. It's a real, like, here's another thing. I mean, talk about Seven Seal. I truly believe that this band is in purgatory. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because they're just, yeah. they're, they're stuck in this no-name town Right. And it's like these people are taking forever to fix this one guy's motorcycle. Yes. They're kind of just like living there. There's so many weird sequences where you're just watching these kids like hanging out, waiting for this motorcycle to be fixed by fucking Godot, the mechanic. <laughs> <laughs> Who is uh, uh, one of Ratchet's boys from uh, One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest? I Absolutely. want something done! <laughs> Sidney Lassick was the guy's name. Uh, the actor that is playing Roscoe in this movie. I think, what was his name in Cuckoo's Nest? Ches- Cheswick or something? Cheswick, yeah. That sounds nice. nice. Excellent. Um, I will say, like, yeah. aesthetically wise, you certainly are not surprised to find out that this guy goes on to do Inspector Gadget. <laughs> yes. It does that look awfully like it. I read that he disowned this film at some point, and I'm like, why? Like, I don't know. Yeah, you're not in a position to disown anything. Exactly. I tried to find a source, and I couldn't. I was like, is there an interview <laughs> I could dig in on, like, the Kellogg stuff? But no. That I, seems like it's probably, yeah, uh, that, oh, I ran into this dude in the fucking mall and asked him about Cool as Ice, and that's what he told me. Uh-huh, Excuse me, sir. Are you David Kellogg, director uh, of Cool as Ice? I'm I sorry disown, to bother you with this Whole Foods. I disown Cool as Ice, but that Michael Jackson video. Yeah, I mean, I'm close with Michael. I I, I, I like him. I think oh, he's and a good boy. Uh, Playboy presents Oily Asses, Volume Seven. Yeah, that's my masterpiece. <laughs> Is it Oily Asses? All right, okay. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah, but the sad. It's, it was a different take for Playboy because they're just skin oil. It was just kind of like they're they're just kind of oily skin. It's kind of gross. No, oh, it's it, it's always like sensual surprises or something <laughs> like that. Oh, they're all. I mean, it's all garbage. Well, that uh, was a surprise, but essential. <laughs> <laughs> At least it was essential surprise. Or uh, or like Twilight Times or like yeah. some fucking you know. Somehow oily <laughs> asses resurfaced. <sighs> Well, it's a sensual surprise. <laughs> now I'm trying to find one because okay, so let's see. Uh, his work featured in Playboy: colon, The Best of Wet and Wild from 1992. Excellent, excellent. He didn't uh, own that. Uh, let's see. Playboy video playmate calendar from 1991. Oh, you know what? Janish uh, shot that too. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, here's the one I was thinking of. Playboy Wet and Wild from 1989. That was a good year for the Wet and Wild series. I bet. Uh, oh, can we talk about how this movie starts off with uh, Vanilla Ice committing attempted murder on this girl? It's crazy. So they, they, they go, they ride into town and the... The 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 fat one we'll call him. His bike breaks down. This guy is played by hold on, uh, because he's uh he's a, a big ER guy. Uh, Deezer D. Yeah, he uh, was he was an, on ER as like a nurse or something, but yeah. he's also like a Christian rapper. Yes, uh, which his is name amazing. Is, he's jazz. He's the fat one in this one, and his uh, bike <laughs> breaks down. They think because he's so fat. <laughs> oh, is that right? I missed that remark. No, they're, they're like, oh, you, you, you're breaking your bike because you're so fat and stuff like that. That's, that's oh. <laughs> well, I guess that explains why he makes the worst sandwich in cinema later in the film. <laughs> but he, uh, yeah, but the, they're driving past, and it's it's very like um, 
It looks like it's like that scene in Hot Shots, like that's trying to parody the hot the yes. top gun bit. Yep. Yeah, totally. And it also reminded me a little bit of adaptation because it's like motorcycle versus horse. <laughs> <laughs> True lies. Uh, uh oh yeah, yeah. absolutely. Uh, so yeah, like he, they're like driving along, and it's like, oh, scope out that babe on a horse. Let's go <laughs> fuck with her. <laughs> and like, this is insane. This dude, is like murder, dude. For the, the first of two times in this movie, Vanilla Ice commits a sick jump on a motorcycle. He like drives over this woman, scares the horse, gets her thrown off yes, the horse. Yeah. Could have fucking killed her right there. And then he's like, yo, what's the problem? Why'd you punch me in the stomach after I did that? Oh, shit, I got kicked in the head like Don Draper's dad. Oh, I'm <laughs> dead now. <laughs> yo, do you name your horse? <laughs> <laughs> Dude, yeah, you cannot fucking go around scaring horses while people are on them. Do you Dude. name your horse? That was so good. Chris, uh, did Mr. Hands name his zoo animal? I forget, honestly. It's been uh, a while, Eric, I gotta tell yeah. you. I was just curious if it had a name. It probably zoo. did. Hands back with a brand new edition. <laughs> they paid him enough. He would have done it. Uh, Ripping your insides out with your huge horse dick. If this is your first episode, Zoo is a documentary <laughs> film that comes up a lot. It's from 2007. Don't watch it. I can't believe we didn't celebrate the 13th anniversary yet, Karen. <laughs> well, Sucker MCs can't fuck these horses. <laughs> It'd be cool if he started fucking a horse right then in front of her. Like, well, because he's an alien, he doesn't know. He's like, right. yeah, this is what you're supposed to do. Yeah, stand back, miss. I'm here to romance the horse. So, like, they have this exchange, and like, she punches him in the stomach, and he goes, "Yup, yup, she likes me." And I'm like, Jesus Christ! By the way, the actress uh, playing the character Kathy, the actress is Kristen Minter, who uh, some of you may know as. One of the bevy of children in the McAllister family in the Home Alone movies. Well, she's the one that sets it all off on the wrong foot because she does the false count. Oh, she's the fucking count fuck up. Yes. Fucking patient zero, man. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, She also was on ER for a bit, I think. Big big ER movie, this one. It's, I, she's, I, um, uh, sorry, uh, Gwyneth Paltrow passed on this. A lot of people passed, but apparently, like, Gwyneth Paltrow Mm -hmm. was like, Really kind of recruited for this movie, and her dad said, do not do this movie, which is the smartest thing yeah, good anyone's job. ever said to anybody. Bruce Paltrow, you're a genius, dude. Now, she's not the one who says, les, les incompetents. <sighs> yeah, you know what the French call, les incompetents? No, no yeah, she's not one of the one. teasing ones. She's like the old eldest one, trusted with the count, and then that kid's like, does this car get four-wheel drive? Yeah. And like I, she, oh, she thinks yeah. it's Kevin. What, it, what it, is. it is, is I think... She's like the oldest kid of the aunt and uncle. Oh, right. Because that's the thing that's hard to distinguish in that movie because you got like cousins and the McAllisters all together. Those McAllisters breed like fucking rats, yeah. dude. Dude, yeah. dis- that family's disgusting. I was just about to say, if you can't recognize a member of your family, maybe yeah. they're not, you know, maybe yeah. you guys aren't really that much of a family. Like, Maybe and- start wrapping it up, John Hurd. You need less kids. You can't I, keep track of them. That fucking cavernous house, dude. Fucking either burn it down or have have like five <laughs> families live in there. Absolutely. Just, come on, John Hurd. Just get the snip. It's not that bad, so I hear. <laughs> <laughs> so let's talk about for- Home Alone for 40 minutes. I'm, I'm okay. <laughs> let's, let's talk about that. Good I'm good with that. There's an uh, annoying thing, like, when this dude's bike breaks down and they're, like, looking at it in the middle of the street and, like, all these people start honking the horn. Amazing. And it's, like, just to stop in traffic like that. What are you doing? Dude, it's insane. But at the same time, it's, like, you know what? Other cars, like, you can just drive around these people. Yes, you definitely can. By the way, the the, uh, the female member of the gang, Princess, uh, that's what I read in the credits. I don't think she has a line. I think she just laughs a few times. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but, oh, yeah. Uh, she was played. She played uh, Patrice, the young, horny sister yep. in Coming to America. <laughs> oh, yes. Which is oh, a great, wow. great movie. Great AKA credit. the best movie. I yeah. gotta rewatch that. It's been it's been like twenty years since I've seen, but I I saw that movie like a thousand times twenty years ago, and then I stopped watching it for no that, good reason. That's Home Alone for me. I haven't. Yes. I I hardly remember that movie. I'll tell you the thing. Uh, funny enough, the coming uh, coming to America just came up recently. I like flipped the input on my TV, like from the Apple TV over to the cable box to put something on, and the TV the cable box landed on BET. And I got to doing something on my iPad, so it was just on. And then, like, Coming to America was on. And I was like, oh, cool. I'll keep this on for a little bit. I haven't watched it in a while. Dude, 
coming to America edited for television is one of the most pointless things you could oh, ever sure. fucking yeah. watch in your life. It was, I, I was sitting there. It's like the entire thing was just bleeps. <laughs> <laughs> At least they're bleeping. It's, I, I find a bleep more soothing than like changing into like forking. Yeah. or whatever i think it was like a, it was probably a healthy mix so I, a bleeping i should say like the where yeah. you like drop the audio out not like an actual oh yeah the audio sensor drop. bleep but audio there was all the rage now did i they just feel blur, uh louis anderson's face out of that movie or no? <laughs> <laughs> they just put they put like a cartoon dog over it <laughs> uh no i mean well i think though it must have a famous television edit where they are changing lines because i tweeted about watching it on like BET just broadcast and it was censored and all of these people started tweeting at me what can only be like the adjusted lines <laughs> that's funny you know, I, I was like okay that's that's a lot i just i wasn't paying attention long enough but like jesus totally pointless also pointless cool as ice the motion picture uh yeah, so yes. yeah so they break down and they break down right outside like this old couple's house, the aforementioned uh, dude um, from Cuckoo's Nest and this other lady, and they, like, get it. Also, this is kind of like the beginning of a horror movie. Yes. Yeah. Because they're, like, invited into this old couple's house to wait while they do these repairs, and I'm like, when is someone coming out with the sledgehammer for these kids? Yeah, this, this smells of motel hell. Well, their well, house, yes! It, Kevin, good reference. <laughs> their house cannot be explained enough. It is. It's got a globe theme. <laughs> it's Pee Wee's Playhouse. This it's is a, like it's Pee Wee's Dad. Yeah, it's a white trash Pee Wee's Playhouse. <laughs> <laughs> so that does lend to the whole serial killer vibe. But this is more like these kids are the horror because, and the horror just ends up being like, yo, 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 we're living here now. We yeah, live totally. with you. But no, they want them there. They're like, oh, you know, we can fix your bike and blah blah blah. And they're like, oh, they're like, yeah, you could fix this. And like, they're, no one's actually like having conversations or saying things to each other. And they start like fucking hammering at it, like it's a fucking Lars von Trier movie. And then like we're here forever. Then yes, Vanilla Ice like goes to, to sleep in a wedding dress in a bathtub for an hour. <laughs> <laughs> and one of one of his members and his crew eats a fucking peanut butter pickle and sardine sandwich. Excuse me. There's also a pie. Pineapple and oh, disgusting yeah. yellow mustard. So this this is the alien angle. It's yes. there. <laughs> yep, yep. It t- you're totally right. It all is starting to come together. Um, Bunch of poochies. My one <laughs> one of my favorite. Like we're just doing a thing, and like you're just looking at something, and it's not even a movie. Is like there's dead silence. There's kind of like maybe a little bit of music in the background while they're waiting around while the repairs are going on. It's kind of when this guy's making the sandwich, and Ice is just like dancing out in the driveway <laughs> yes. to to nothing, mm-hmm. just very quietly. It's so quiet you can like hear his feet shuffling on the pavement. And this is when the fucking Corvette well, shows up. Well, this is how he communicates uh, back with his mother. Plan is he dances. <laughs> it's a dancing language, and it's quite exquisite, I have to say. And this is our introduction to Kathy and her boyfriend Nick. Mm. Uh, you know what Nick rhymes with Dick. Oh, yeah. yeah. We'll find that out soon. But Kathy was introduced <laughs> when she fell off the horse. But yes. Oh, yeah, you're right. You're right. This you're is right. like this is like the big the big conflict of this film is that this girl has a boyfriend right now. Right. There's no <laughs> I, other conflict. And again, like not only did I think that the, not only do I do I not have any recollection of seeing this movie seven to eight years ago. I also really just thought that this was like a movie where it's like there's country clubs it's a snobs versus slobs thing and this kidnapping and witness protection angle i do not remember a lick of it yeah dude it's it's here to stay my friend and snobs versus slobs would have been way way better oh of better. course bigger cast at least at that point bigger got- cast like you get someone who's like and you know no offense to michael gross i think he's a total legend but like you get someone in that dad role with like a little more gravitas and oh. he's like the president of the country club. It just makes sense. And then it's like, oh, you know, uh, the only way um, there's a battle of the bands at the country club and blah, blah, blah. And Nick's yep. band's going to play. But Ice's band is going to play and yada, yada, yada. The movie writes itself. We just yeah. made a better fucking cool as ice in under seven seconds. <laughs> it's one of those situations, too, where because it's vanilla ice, you have to make this guy the worst person on earth to make oh, yeah. vanilla ice even somewhat of a, ob, a a good option dude like they're one step removed from making this character a child murderer just so vanilla <laughs> ice can look we're, good in this movie we're His coming fr- up on the twin peaks scene with him <laughs> yes oh. yes we are but that well is- now hang on a second though i yes, just want yes, to point sorry, out sorry. that nick 
this this uh, this boyfriend played by uh, actor John Newton. I swear, because who knows how long this quarantine is going on. Uh, we should say recording this episode April the 15th, 2020 for quarantine posterity's sake. This actor plays Kyle uh, in the last season of Melrose Place. Oh, wow. Uh, he's, uh, or is he Ryan? <laughs> Same yes, difference. Yes, yes. No, no, no. Sorry. His name, the character's name is Ryan. He's Kyle's long lost brother, played oh, by, played by Rob Estes, who oh. we have not gotten to yet on the I, show. I thought he would be like Jake's bastard child. <laughs> yeah. uh, at what point does Ice run, uh, steal her? Her uh, planner, her Filofax, much like the film uh, um, Filofax, also known as Taking Care of Business. <laughs> it's it's pretty much when uh, was it the it, horse? No, it's I don't think it's the horse. I think it's when he's out in front of the. It's right yeah. here. Oh, it's yes. where he's. It's where he tells her uh, very hilariously to drop that zero and get with the hero. Yeah, I think it's around this exchange. Did right Vanilla here. Ice originate that phrase, or what are we talking here? Ooh. That, that, I don't know. Um, I should. I want to check it out on Phrasepedia. <laughs> no, oh, no, no, no. You know who that was? That was Phil Roth. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Let's chalk that one up for movie magic. <laughs> but no, there, I, I remember that line from the plot against America, Kevin. <laughs> Nick uh, is immediately unlikable, and he's immediately doing this thing where he's just like, "You have to go to." I, I don't even know. Like, you have to go to the same college as me because uh, couples that don't stay together in college break up, and blah blah. blah. And she's like clearly not having any of this she's like yeah that's sort of the point i thought hey. he was advocating to break up with her no no he wants her to go to the same college because oh i see because he's like you know he he understands he's, he's a little above his weight here and is trying to stick with it right he's like a stupid rich guy yeah and she's like mm -hmm. a hard-working middle-class chick uh but yeah, I guess she's. Uh, do they mention it? Like she's on her way to an Ivy League school or something like that. This news report that her family <laughs> yes, watches. Yes, this is. It, it's exactly where we are right here. So there is a weird. It, did you guys catch this? It's a totally unsettling. It's just. It's a thing you would do in a music video, but it's like the fast camera of like the family sitting in the house. Yes. And yeah. it's like when you generally when you're using stuff like that, it's to display like f you know frantic you know environments or so or a wild situation sure this is literally it's just being used to show a family sitting in their living room well, it's, well, also it's a big music video thing it's an effect yeah. that you would find all the time so of course he's using it he's doing what he knows I, you know, it is a thing where but it, or like it's a, you know it, it would be a passage of time thing but like yeah it is just sort of to show that these are a white bread middle american family yada 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 oh generally you don't also appear on television if you're in the witness protection <laughs> yeah. program thank you ah uh, yeah so uh, i think there's no point in beating around the bush here. i think we just have to explain what's going on here because um she's on and it's just like a good kid police report or, or a news report it's like this is a good kid in our town <laughs> yeah she's, well, she's, doing, like, she's doing great look at these grades oh my <laughs> god <laughs> teen of the month or something <laughs> oh dude teen I'm of the month club i'm subscribed to the teen of the month club uh -oh. i get it every single month but that's yeah it's a weird like you know they say that she had got like a 1600 on her sats uh, uh, whatever. She's a fucking horseback riding champion. She, uh, you know, is is doing well in school. She's got a four point oh GPA. All she that started shit. home alone. Like, yeah, she, things are going great for her. <laughs> Was a child actor in Home Alone. <laughs> but yeah, and she and they're like they're on. There is this woman interviewing her, and right next to her is her dad, and the dad is just like. He, he it's kind of funny because and, and michael gross a does rule he's the dad on family ties and absolutely in, uh tremors tremors, tremors like 100 yeah, tremors series. movies oh steve michael gross question for you sure was uh if you remember back to our uh totally speaking of peewee's playhouse our fucking totally rad senior year college apartment mm -hmm. did you have a picture of michael gross on your door was that james seeking Oh God! I think it was Michael Gross. I think it was Michael Gross. Because was it? Know. Yeah. Okay. Just, so only Michael Gross or you could enter that room. <laughs> <laughs> and sadly, only I entered that room. <laughs> we never could secure Michael Gross for a public appearance. Or, or so you think. <laughs> I am Michael Gross, and I've been sleeping in your bed. Whenever you, whenever you go to class, I take a nap. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh, you've got a lot of pornography, Stephen. I've watched all of it. Oh it's sensational. <laughs> Could you imagine a Hollywood caliber actor like him <laughs> settling in in those dirty sheets? Hollywood Bl- caliber is exactly correct, Eric. Because <laughs> that dude is doing some fucking Hallmark movies. Oh, man. So they watch this thing. And while they're watching it, we have a cut to uh, Jack McGee, who was like the chief on Rescue Me Mm -hmm. and some other guy. And the guy, Jack McGee's like, guess who I just saw on TV? (laughs) And then it cuts away from those dudes for a long while. So you don't really know what's going on there. By the way, I love how Michael Gross, when interviewed, is like still trying to be in the witness protection program. He's like, all right, let me just cover my face ever so slightly while I'm talking. Well, it's like the move is, hey, dad, I'm getting interviewed for teen of the month. That's great, sweetheart. Um, Don't, you know, just give your fake name and everything's going to be fine. And like, you have to be on it too. Like, well, I can't because I'm busy. Yeah, exactly. If, or or it's like, oh, no, sweetheart, like, this is your moment. It shouldn't be a thing for a 50-year-old guy to be in. It would be hilarious if it cuts to the gangster uh, or the corrupt cop, as we find out, and he sees Michael, uh, Michael Gross with the fingers over his face like that. He's like, why are they interviewing this lady uh, all alone? Where's the father? Where's the father? <laughs> Wait, or, there's nobody else here with her? There should or, be some parent. Weird disembodied takes- voice. Or he takes out a photo of Michael Gross and puts his fingers up to the face. Like, Hold on a second. Hold on a second. Dude, that would have been the move. I would have been laughing my ass off still right now. Uh, but yeah, so they're in the witness protection program because Michael Gross used to be a cop and there were corrupt cops and he kind of ratted on everybody and they all went away and yada, yada, yada. Yeah, so he's a, he's a uh, piece of shit. <laughs> Dude, it should have been the backstory should have been what they did for uh Mike the Cleaner on Better Call Saul, which is that he's an ex Philly cop who finds out that there's like some crooked cops and he goes back to Philly and he just fucking murders them in the street. <laughs> that would have been the move. But instead, yes, with this protection program, which we find out in a fucking yeah. hilarious heart to heart scene later. But so they watch this news thing. And then yeah, they- honey, I'm now I'm eating my egg noodles with ketchup like a schnook. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, they, that's probably what they're eating for dinner, dude. The parents are like, oh, hey, uh, Nick, you want to stay for dinner? And he he gets out of there. So it's just uh, the the daughter, Kathy, and the, the son, I think, is Billy. Do you guys catch this, by the way? I don't think we're paying for the rights to see it, but we can hear the theme song from Super Mario World 3 for Nintendo. I Absolutely. was unsure if it was 3 or 2. Thank you for, for confirming. I'm, pre- I'm pretty sure that it was 3. Um, the and timeline so she, makes sense. Yeah, and so she finds that she's like, oh, fuck, I can't find my planner, blah, 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 and the kid's like, ah, fuck you, I don't know, why don't you retrace your steps? <laughs> and there's a, there is a line in here which I was truly shocked to made into this movie. She's like, okay, so, you know, I, I didn't have it here, I didn't have it there. Where was I before that? Oh, I was at Nick's house, and she goes, and I didn't touch it at Nick's house, and this little brother starts laughing hysterically. Yeah. Well, he's oh, like a well sex-crazed little fucking cretin is what he is. He's a little pervert, dude. This kid was in uh, The Sandlot a few years later, too. Yes, he was. Which one does he play, Cabin? you remember? Uh, I think he's... Ah, oh, fuck. Is Squelchy? he the sand or the lot? He's the lot, Eric. <laughs> okay. Um, but yeah, I forget his name. He's not he, one of the main ones. I gotta, yeah, he's a backup guy. I, I have yeah. to bring it up because I'm going to watch this movie eventually. It is... Oh, God, what is it called? The, uh, the Pruder film? No, it's a... Oh, uh, yes, it's a It's a movie that Giannis... Uh, what's this guy's name? Giannis Kaminsky? Or? Yeah, Janusz, Janusz Kaminsky. Yeah. Janusz Kaminsky uh, shot this before uh, Cool as Ice. It's called Grim Prairie Tales, and it's got James Earl Jones <laughs> and Brad Dourif, and it's an anthology movie about cowboys sitting around... An anthology horror movie about cowboys sitting around a fire telling each other scary stories. And the wig I can see from James Earl Jones is pretty exciting. Oh, my (laughs) God. Yeah, Yeah. he did like a a few. I looked this up, too. I I forgot the details. But there's one like maybe after this, after that one, before this one, where it's just like, oh, the dreaded uh, night stalking person. You know, it's a horror movie. One of those deals. Yeah. So yeah, she's um, the, uh, you know she she realizes that ice has it. Um, ice comes back to her. What what happens here? The the, the, the oh, the, well, this is when the the, the 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 goons show up. It's very is, yeah. yeah. So the goons come up because she she realizes that ice ripped her off and she goes outside and he's there and the goons are there. <laughs> yes, and so Michael Gross. It's very important. Michael Gross spies 
that the that Vanilla Ice is talking to the goons, but it's insofar as like, hey, what are you doing here? He, I don't know, kid. No, what are you doing here? He wants to know the directions to the sugar shack, which oh, should oh. only be a <laughs> cocaine brewery. <laughs> yep. Totally a place like where they fucking brew different kinds of cocaine for you to sniff at the table. Uh, was, welcome to the sugar shack. All of our coke here is family style. <laughs> um, so we just put it out in the middle yeah, of the table. I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll start with a schnoz brow, please. Thank <laughs> you. Okay, okay. Uh, and we, we are uh, proud to say that all of the cocaine here at the sugar shack is indeed airport port to table <laughs> uh that i all have a honker stout uh yeah we do <laughs> we ask if you have a heart attack please do it outside it's a little distracting for our other patrons now if your ticker's pretty strong though and you can get through a couple of our boiler makers back to back to back <laughs> you'll get yourself a free sugar shack t-shirt uh and we have uh, uh bags here for you to stab when you need uh, just here at the end because you know you get a little hyped up. I know. Oh, yep. And we have a special dessert as well, which is sort of like a creme brulee, but it's a burnt uh, cocaine known as crack. Um. <laughs> <laughs> yep. And uh, yeah, just to let you know, because it, it distracts some people sometimes, but most of our patrons love it. Yes. Heart of glasses on repeat. Just on repeat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. Uh yeah, so so that's what that's what happens. She goes to meet Nick at the sugar shack, and then Ice shows up at the house, and the mother is like, one horny is all get out for Vanilla Ice, even though she's kind of scared of him. Uh, but she's like, she's at the sugar shack, <laughs> and he's like, <laughs> and he's like, damn, the sugar shack, all right. And, and then like he asks these goons for directions. That's what it is. Yo, fat Italian. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me how to get to the sugar shack. And they're like, yeah, why don't you uh, go up your mother's asshole and take a left, all right? <laughs> the Which most is- disgusting thing in the world happens right here. Yes. This band that's it, playing at the Sugar Shack? Uh, no, the serial killer next to uh, the main guy, the, the other corrupt cop. The tall, yeah. skinny guy, yeah. They, okay. are, they are eating uh, fast food, and yep. as they're getting ready to go, this guy, like a bird feeding its young <laughs> drops fucking food out of his mouth yes. onto the fucking pavement. I've no, oh, I missed that no, entirely. He, he spits it out like it's a cigarette or something. Like, what are you talking about? That's food. I, I missed that too, my lord. Was well, this the same guy that was going like, oh, I want a bag of hamburgers? Yes. That's well, this the, the weird it's thing a big is like, theme going on this month is the ba- two bag of hamburgers. <laughs> You're totally right, dude. The two guys, one of them, you know, the rescue me dude is like just totally regular, like. Your classic, and it's very Home Alone esque, right? They're goofy, they're goonish. Absolutely, second, he's, I should say he's Clark, played by Jack McGee, and then the, and the other guy is Morrissey, hilariously, who is scary as fuck. Like I don't know what movie he thinks he's in, but it's not cool as ice. <laughs> this dude's true. like, oh wait a minute, I didn't finish reading the script. We don't kill that kid. <laughs> I kidnapped a child. <laughs> And now the boy is dead. He's dead. He's dead. He's dead. He's dead. <laughs> oh, Morrissey jokes. Uh, so yeah, they go to the Sugar Shack. There is a twin rock band playing. Anyone get this? Uh, look at these twins. Yeah, it was disgusting. They were the eerie. They were. They were. And this dude that's like singing. He looks like Noel from Frasier. Oh yeah, and those two girls are at the um are at the booth, and they're like, James was always cool. <laughs> Excellent joke. Twin Peaks season yes. three reference. Dude. I mean, this this is kind of, this the Sugar Shack does kind of feel like that bar. If, yes, if that bar it's, sucked, it's, <laughs> it's that and like fucking like the like the fireman's bar. ball, like the fucking old Polish bar movies. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, the Milos Forman's yeah, fuck, yeah, fireman's I mean, ball. It's, yeah. <laughs> it looks it's like there's like union representatives there. <laughs> it does have. It does have a Satan Tango esque kind of vibe yep. as well. A it's because all of these people in this town have been suffering in purgatory for centuries, dude. <laughs> My big question about this scene and the the dynamics of this film, because you know, um, uh, Ice T is supposed to be this bad boy. Uh, from oh, no, no, hang up, Vanilla Ice. Oh shit! Uh, Ice right. T's not disgracing himself <laughs> in this film, sir. Vanilla Ice. Uh, maybe I'll call. It. What is this character's name? Johnny. 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 Yeah. Johnny. Johnny Van something. And and the actor Vanilla Ice. Rob is, Van Winkle. Oh, I was gonna say Rip, but I think you're right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so he's supposed to be a bad boy from out of town, and then this Nick guy is 
oh, he's drinking alcohol. Maybe he's bad. Dude, and it's a thing that I cannot stand, especially when someone's bragging about it, which I have seen in person. When you're sneaking alcohol into a bar and you're like, man, look, I got my own stash. And it's like, dude, go to the bar. Yes, obviously. But what do you think fucking Johnny's up to? He's he's this cool... uh, "Quote unquote cool, uh, like a rap personality. He's doing something. Well, that's a weird thing. Is he's the, that's the only. And again, this movie is like it's. I, I don't. I didn't check the rating. It's probably PG or PG thirteen. So PG. Johnny has to be totally clean, which doesn't make a ton of sense, right? Like he's straight edge or something. Yeah. Uh, I will tell you the coolest thing about Johnny is he has a Jim Jarmusch jacket. <laughs> <laughs> He's got this jacket right, with down, down by, by law. law on the back. Yeah, I think totally. I saw only lev- lovers left alive on the sleeve. <laughs> yeah, on this sleeve over here, it says limits of control. <laughs> Yo, Roberto Bonini is brilliant. <laughs> Yo, check out what it says across the left pocket. Dead man. <laughs> So there's a there's a really uncomfortable thing where Johnny's like swilling vodka out of this bottle. No, we're getting them like, mixed up. Nick is drinking. Oh yeah, Jesus Christ! Yeah, you're right. Oh, Nick by the is, way, that uh, movie Ghost Dogs based on me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he does fight just as well as the the samurai oh, dude, himself, the dude. Fight scene. Uh, but yeah, he's uh, Nick is like getting tanked and whatnot. And he's like, "What's the matter, Kathy? Don't you want to take a pull?" <laughs> And she's like, I, I don't know, man. This club clearly sucks ass. And he's like, yeah, well, why don't we go for a drive or something? And she's like, dude, you have been drinking. Yes. And it's, it's again, it's like we have to make Vanilla Ice look so awesome in this movie that now this dude, this, like, villain guy is, like, getting super excited to drive drunk. And um, there's this other band playing just real again, they're, they're bad rock, and Ice and his crew are not having it. This is when... He they unplug their music in the middle ta, ta, of their, ta, take over in their set and then <laughs> and again like this goes to your point of like being troubadours like they're not booked to play this club and I'm not no. sure what they never talk about their manager or their next it, gig yeah. is like let's no just payment. sow chaos that's exactly right it's nothing about like yo we gotta play this place so we can someday get a record deal yes or any it's none of that it's just like. Yeah, we're doing it for the love of the music. Yep. There is no, yeah, the fact that there's no timetable is insane. Like, maybe they got a gig they got to go. There should be a ticking clock of some kind. Well, You're told, that's it, exactly what it is, dude. They're on tour, and it's like, oh, man, we broke down in this weird Tim Burton town. <laughs> you say, so chaos. I say liberate minds. Got it. <laughs> right. He, they, freak out, they freak out a lot of squares in this, Chris. They do. They break they, them out of their fucking routine. Right, they, like 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 Neo in the Matrix, right? Uh huh. <laughs> they start singing the P, or he starts singing. His band doesn't do shit. The People's Choice, which is uh, a, a song. song. So, so let me ask you this: I've never actually looked this up, but the thought occurred to me watching this movie. So, at some point, Vanilla Ice had like a full LP, yes, with presumably more than <laughs> like eight songs on it. Yeah. Are all of these songs coming from the same album that Ice Ice Baby is on? No, they are not. I don't think I the the first song is in. <laughs> I'm gonna say this word in interpolation of um uh, a small track on the first record, but the other the sex song, um and song. and and the uh the People's Choice I think are not on that record. Okay, so you're telling me that in the early '90s. Vanilla Ice then had at least two albums. Yeah. well, he That's I mean, fucking crazy. And we don't even get Ice Ice Baby in this film. No. Well, I think that's part of the thing, though, right? Is like, yo, I got to do something to get me away from that song. That was, right. you know? I mean, that was bothering me. I kept expecting at some point he's mm. just going to do it. You know what I mean? Like, do it, dude. Right. I mean, but I, it's like you can't though. I mean, this is it's his big movie thing. It's like I gotta prove I'm more than Ice Ice Baby, baby. Vanilla <laughs> Ice is like kind of amazing, and like his second record was a live album. <laughs> is that right? Yes, <laughs> it's, it's awesome. It's, he must it's be great insane. live. He must be a great performer. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, here's here's the thing. To say something nice about Rob Van Winkle, aka Vanilla Ice, I, I don't care for his fucking horrible rap, but. This dude can dance like a motherfucker. And he's dancing up a storm in this movie. And it actually is pretty great to watch. I will just say that. 
And you know he's a, and the whole thing is like he's a good looking white dude that can oh dance. he's, he's he, handsome as hell too it's that's kind of that crazy is a big fucking nog and when I saw that giant head come on screen and I looked up his age I was like this guy's like thirty in this movie right no twenty four wow that's a huge yeah. head he looks like the son of Max Headroom <laughs> yes, <laughs> he does exactly it's he's kind of you're right Chris he's kind of like a sexy Matt Frewer a little yeah bit. a little bit oh my god you're totally <laughs> right I mean not to Holy say Max shit. Frewer is not sexy. Well, did you, did you catch Matt Frewer in uh, Honey, I Shrunk the Kids? Good Lord. <laughs> Matt, Frewer, working for you. Matt Frewer and Tom Noonan used to hit the town and just pick up babes. <laughs> oh, dude, that's dude. the two of them could have gone out and you could concoct a great story about how they were brothers. Mm-hmm. You know, they do look well enough alike. Dude, if you're Matt, a tall, skinny guy, go- you're just going to do all right no matter what. Yep. Matt, we're going to Pound Town. <laughs> Get in the car. Hey, hey, man. Witness me, right? Yeah, witness me. <laughs> Look at this. Hey, honey, you want to be in a real Eiffel Tower? Because we're so fucking incredibly tall and scary. <laughs> uh, so he takes over the, the, the performance space here. They do this song. Which song is it? This is a, a People's Choice, and everyone's oh, so going... Good. Everyone's so upset that they're like, oh my god, what's happening? Except for Christy, who's like, I want to fuck that guy. Which you know, sure, why not? Kathy. Yeah. Jack. <laughs> oh, he's calling her Cat this whole movie, and she's yeah. never, she's always like, "That's not my name, dude." But it's that's like he's gonna give you a sexy nickname. He oh, meets for sure. you, you're getting a sexy ne- a nickname. Even you, Steve, you get one. <laughs> oh, well, oh, that's exciting. <laughs> I don't know what it would be, but little Stevie. Oh no, <laughs> or Teve. Team. Oh, team. oh, dude, team. That would be my sexy <laughs> vanilla ice nickname. We Thank get you. into some sexy dancing right here, though, dude. He's he spies Kathy in the crowd, and they start going into dance town. And poor fucking alcoholic <laughs> Nick is just staring on. Nick wasn't getting he he was beyond the point of coming back from that for that evening at least. Yeah, no, you're totally right. Uh, but it's here too that she's like, by the way. You have 24 hours to return my fucking planner. And at that, it's kind of funny that the, the clock, which also doesn't matter. You think, to Eric's point, this movie needs a clock because at, at some point um, during this night, uh, the goons go up to Michael Gross, like, oh, hey, Johnny, how's it going? Like, That's uh, not my name anymore. And it's like, um, you got uh, 24 hours to give us 500 grand. Talk to you later. Yeah, yeah oh, or we're right. coming back to this pie shop. <laughs> <laughs> Hear me, Jimmy? <laughs> oh, dude, it's fucking like a history of violence. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so Nick acts like a total asshole in the parking lot, do, doing one of those, like, she's walking away because he's wasted and she's going to walk home, and he does the scream out, get in the car! And you're like, oh, man. Uh, and so Kathy walks home, and, like, here's where these corrupt cops are, like, behind her with the headlights on, and I'm... I don't think they're going to entirely run her down, but try to, like, <laughs> scare her a little bit. And this is where Vanilla Ice, like, rides in and, like, cuts them off on his motorcycle. He's like, get on. We got to go. I will say um, one thing I realized, what I learned today is that Vanilla Ice did most of his motorcycle stunts because he was apparently, like, a motocross guy. Oh, that checks. Yeah, so he's doing, wow. he's doing a lot of this work. Because he's not wearing a helmet at all in this movie, by the way. No, and it's clearly a lot of this is him definitely driving the motorcycle although some of the hats he wears could cover a helmet underneath <laughs> them. That's true. true. and one of them has armor on them like one of these caps oh yeah like reflective it's... armor plating <laughs> he's also wearing these like jean-paul gautier sunglasses the whole time oh by we mentioned the haircut but like he's even got a little like rat tail we have not talked about the haircut enough because it's a wait, two- wait wait a rat tail yeah, dude he's got like a little he's got like a little like tied up Big, like little, he, is the hair. Yes, his hair is short, but he's got like a rat tail in the back, wow, and then he's got I these notice. mazes. I mean, I think you can see. A, I mean, I think you can see anything in that haircut if you look at it the right. <laughs> like, I think the Zelda triangle is in there somewhere. Yo, Barbara, give me the magic eye. <laughs> oh shit, a sailboat! It's a schooner. <laughs> <laughs> Call this- Eric, I think one of them is supposed to be like the one side of his head is supposed to be shaved like a brick wall. Yes, and the other one's like okay. spiky and, stuff. Yeah, and the other side is the uh, the the map to Westworld or whatever Ed Harris was looking for. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking haircut by MC Escher. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, Yo, look is- at this haircut. It's an infinite staircase. <laughs> 
it's like what is the perspective I'm, am i supposed to be looking oh wow <laughs> yeah it's a bunch of geese but if you look at it this way it's like they're flying and then they're swimming like fish figure it out <laughs> hypnotizing <laughs> nope <laughs> Uh, so Ice comes out of the club at one point and he sees, uh, I, I guess he, he drops her off or some shit. Cause the, the next thing I'm recalling here is that, uh, he finds Nick bashing all these motorcycles. I think he's going back to get his boys and stuff. Cause he right. drops her off and she's like, you got 24 hours, buddy. And like, they're, oh, they're, flirting. Right. they're into it. She yeah. wants to fuck him for sure. Yeah. And but then there's this like street fight out in front of the, the fucking sugar shack. Th- this is the real Twin Peaks scene. Because there's this fucking uh, train going by in the background. There's this old couple in the dark watching the fight. Yes, dude. This old this old couple, they're sitting in rocking it's, chairs it's, saying nothing. It's happening like it's outside of a house, it looks like. Gotta light. Yes. Gotta it's, light. It is the gotta light people are watching Amazing. Vanilla Ice beat up these fucking dudes. And like, yeah, like and he's just obviously awesome. And, and that that's a problem in the movie. Like he never fails ever. He's just great at everything aside from emoting and acting but like you know he's catching <laughs> the punches like one guy gets him from behind but he like he just has all the moves yeah uh there's a hilarious shot where kathy's laying in bed trying to think about uh vanilla ice but instead she's just listening to her parents fight about being in witness protection in the <laughs> other room <laughs> they're like call the agency he's like i tried it didn't work first of all what <laughs> fucking why wow, they really cut these people loose huh is it the next morning or this? Or maybe I'm getting ahead of myself, but I just want to quickly mention that he like dips ice into her mouth to that, wake her up. Oh, this that is, the next is morning. that's this next scene. It's how oh he wakes God. her up. I do. I, I want to. I, I tweeted about this. It's it's the most fascinating thing I've ever seen. Is she sleeps with a a a plate, a, a flat plate with three lemons on it next to her bed, I like saw where an alarm last, clock might be. I saw you tweet that last night, dude, and I was waiting for it, and I gotta tell you, as insane and amazing as that is, which also must just make wait, the room kind of smell well, nice. Whoa, whoa, wait. You guys not, don't know how to use the three lemons? <laughs> <laughs> it's really easy. You don't need uh, alarm clocks anymore. Something that I think totally tops the lemons, though, Steve, I'm sorry to break it to you, oh, please. is the fucking... No more than a medium-sized fish bowl with about 40 little blue fish in it. It's yes. torture. Dude, it's total torture. They'd be eating each other alive. Speaking of torture, this fucking, this, the, the water treatment he gives her. <laughs> yeah, well, she's waterboarding a, this woman. Well, it's terrifying. Ice scram. It, and it's like super sexy, obviously, right? He puts it all, all over her lips. And it's like, oh. And then he's like. Oh, you can't be quiet. We can't let mommy and daddy know I'm here. And it's like, shit, dude, right. this is pretty getting creepy. This I could have sworn, crazy. like, the way that this happened, because she's like, try, like, the, when it cuts from the parents arguing, right? It's like the middle of the night, she's trying to go to sleep, she can't. And then immediately cuts to a close up of this actress, and he's fucking, you know, putting the ice cube down and whatever. <laughs> and she's got, there's like a fucking little drool line of water that's left over or whatever. <laughs> I thought she was like supposed to be having a sexy dream about him uh, because it, it's so insane that he would sneak into her room at the crack of dawn. You, you are you are making it sound almost romantic. This is no. a guy in his mid twenties doing a breaking yeah. and entering and molesting a high school student. <laughs> yes, that's yes, absolutely it's, true. It's fucking crazy and he uses and the so words like, mommy and daddy which you should not do in this scene ladies nope. and gentlemen or or you know what steve in any scene that doesn't involve like an adult talking to a little kid yo <laughs> yo good morning my love i broke into your house <laughs> guess what your family is dead <laughs> Yo, this house is on fire, literally. <laughs> We're gonna make love on your brother's corpse, yo. <laughs> yo, that what? would be hot. I took, <laughs> I took your father down in the basement like in cold blood and fucking shot him. <laughs> Book was dope. <laughs> Yo, I watched this film, Funny Games, and I hit your father in the fucking face with a golf club. I asked your mother for some eggs. <laughs> I just, I just love the idea of him also just reading Truman Capote. <laughs> yeah, other, other voices, other rooms, fucking rocks, yo, shit. <laughs> music, music for chameleons is my shit. <laughs> uh, but so like, is they're talking, and he gives the he gives the, uh, uh, the planner back. day planner back. She like stole some business cards from him. I didn't understand what this was. I was confused. It's I think it's his ID, and at some point there's a business card for somebody else named Monique, 
And she uses this the entire movie as like her own thing that she could do in this movie because she has nothing to do anyway. Well, she's I think just at like the start in the music video, a girl gives him uh, her number oh, and she's okay. Monique. And so she's like, Oh, I'm jealous now. You got a girl's number, I guess. That's that's Monique, uh, played by an actress named Bobby Brown. Oh. Uh and I gotta tell you, just really quickly, this filmography. Uh, of course, uh, an appearance on Baywatch Nights. Mm-hmm. Uh, she plays Video Babe in Last Action Hero, and in Eric, one of your all-time favorite movies, oh. uh, one of the one of the films uh, from the oeuvre of the Barbarian Brothers. She plays Peter's girlfriend in Double Trouble. Oh, interesting. Now I don't remember Double Trouble too well. Now Think Big. That was my show. Oh, I oh, see. That, I yeah. See. Well, I want I want David Carradine and with with the Barbarian yeah. Brothers. One of them just died, I think. But. Oh, fuck. R.I.P.D. Oh, but wait, you you skipped the big. She she married Whitney Houston. Yeah, she did. <laughs> oh, right. I totally <laughs> forgot about that. And then one uh, like sold like the home videos or something. <laughs> Jesus, yeah. <laughs> Uh, anyway, yeah, she's someone you see at the beginning of the movie and then never again. Um, and you know, that's kind of their thing. The little brother shows up and he's like, Hey, how's it going? Oh man, you got a cool bike outside. And he's like, Yeah, little kid, maybe I'll give you a ride sometime. And he's, she's, he's like, After you're done making sex with my sister, <laughs> oh man, douche, chill. That's uncomfortable. And she freaks out and like, kicks this little sandlot kid out of the room and whatever and he's like yo i'll be outside waiting for you whenever it is you're ready feel free to take a shower <laughs> yo don't and- worry little man i'm gonna describe what i did to her <laughs> <laughs> and he jumps out this window and this i have to say is the most beautiful shot in the movie i agree like he he steps outside and it's like dawn and the camera does this nice like turn around and i was expecting like when it's done doing this like 180, you're going to see Michael Gross standing there like disapprovingly, but he's not. It's just this great shot of, you know, an American suburban neighborhood. And then <laughs> the sprinkler turns on. The best- he, he runs for the hills because, dude, that is too close to taking a shower for this guy. <laughs> <laughs> the best part, and he's definitely wearing the clothes from the night before. Absolutely. Because they have no bags or anything. Like, what are, do these people just exist on just, motorcycles? That's a great question. Not a, not a lick of luggage, huh? I don't understand it. It's very weird. They are so otherworldly. Like, what are they doing? Yo, it turns out these humans wear more than one uniform. <laughs> It's just insane. Um, uh, we, uh, he calls the kid slick like he's Tom Sizemore in Heat. <laughs> it's really... <laughs> this relationship with the brother really irks me, man. This is the one part I was really not into. Uh, but it's another thing that he's he's good at, though, dude, because uh, 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 the, the other boyfriend, Dick there, Nick, is yep. like, oh, yeah, you can take a ride in my car some other time. And he's like, you always lie to me, Nick. And, like, again, because... Vanilla Ice is the best every single time. He's like instantly great with the kid, buddy yeah. buddy with him, kind of a thing. And so, like seeing Vanilla Ice have sex with his sister is so inspiring <laughs> that he even gets a haircut to mimic uh, Vanilla Ice a little later in the film. It's a fun moment for everyone. See, it is a fun moment for everyone. He goes, uh, he takes her on a motorcycle ride. They go to a construction site. This is sort of their like falling in love montage question mark now this is this film released in 1991 so figure production in 90 but man a fucking glorious holdover from the beautiful 80s the second ice hits the fucking pedal on this motorcycle and they go off on this montage adventure the saxophone Mm -hmm. kicks in so gloriously right here i kind of perked up a little bit (laughs) But it's this good. is the uh this it's is the, the best music in the movie. Oh, absolutely. This is the um the heart to heart like yo, what's it like to have a family? <laughs> Which is just yo, oh, it I just got to ask, what is it that you people do in the bathroom at all? I go in there, I just see a bowl of water and I'm like, "What? <laughs> yo, do you eat with your mouth?" <laughs> Hey, guys, it turns out we don't eat with butts. <laughs> Stop putting food in your butt. <laughs> that, that dude's taking that pickle sandwich out of his ass. <laughs> this, like, montage of fun that they have is so great. He, like, there's a lot of, like, icisms that get thrown out right here. The best of which I think is, if you live your life for someone else, well, 
you ain't living. Ooh. Excellent. And yes. he's really speaking to Cat right here because it's like, yo, you're going to always do what your daddy says or what? Again, Which is like is, the thing through this whole movie. And that is the way this movie ends at a country club where her dad is like, Harub, I cannot believe you're worth the vanilla ice. And then yep. like she she tells him she's going to live her own way. But that does not happen. No. no, no. And it needs to, dude. And I can picture it now. Like he's harumphing in the corner of the country club ballroom. Mm-hmm. And he's like, yo, pops, this one's for you. Check it. <laughs> dun, 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 sure. Dun, dun. You know, and that's like a fucking phenomenal end yes. motion picture. Cool. Ice. Mic drop and say, I'm taking your daughter to ISIS. <laughs> <laughs> that's that. This this scene culminates with her kissing him, and it's one of the funniest fucking things I've ever... Well, it actually doesn't, because they continue making out later in a separate montage that happens three minutes after the other montage yep. ends. But when she she lays one on him initially right here when they're talking, he goes, mmm. Like, he just smelled yeah. <laughs> like good cookies. <laughs> Oh, I was laughing again. Uh, yeah, but in the second montage, they're in a field. They fall down together under the, uh, you know, into the brush, and it's like they fucked there, right? Or this is when this yeah. is when the fucking has you're, to you're, happen. Absolutely. But it's not just the fields. They're like on the salt flats at some <laughs> yes, point. I don't it's, know. But where yes, it's both. And I'm like, where does this movie take place? It's oh, very weird. Well, but this is also where you see Vanilla Ice learning to ride the, a horse. The, the alien species, of course, can just like blip and go to another part of. Oh the right. Oh, they get the shore. I, I definitely think it's an alien situation. She uh, she actually says, like, where are you from? And he says, around, yep, yep. And I think <laughs> yep, yep might be the name of the planet <laughs> in the around y- gal- galaxy or constellation. Yo, I'm from yep, yep, seven. <laughs> yep, it, yep, I'm a yep, yepian. <laughs> Ooh, it was a secret Cleep Glossary episode. I love it. <laughs> dude, yeah. Yeah, the Yep Yep Seven clan, man. They fucking fought for the rebellion. Dude. <laughs> yeah, I was a jizz player. What? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I played the Moss Eisley Cantina. The Take Cleep Glock's choice. <laughs> Figure and Dan, drop it. <laughs> the overload of Yep Yep said that you gotta be yourself. <laughs> 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 A jizz whaler, really? A man of your talent? <laughs> Dude, another fucking hilarious thing about um, this uh, uh, extended montage of them in the desert is uh, he definitely just has his shirt off at one point, and he's like, yo, this is how you ride a motorcycle. Let me teach you. First shirt off. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so he drops her off after a, an entire day of hanging out in a field, in a meadow, we in get a some desert. Great a harumphing from Michael Gross here is where have you been all day? Harumph. Yeah, and this is where he fucking he tells off Vanilla Ice. He's like, "You stay away from my daughter." All that stuff. I thought it was her choice. What? <laughs> I mean, his suspicions are right because he sees this mysterious stranger who looks like and talks like he's from another planet talking with these, you know, uh, the 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 bad men from I guess I don't know where New York. I don't know. Right? Well, that's the yeah. Thing. You never it's really get an origin. It is so ill defined. It is so ill defined. Also, like I don't know, man. Like the thing is, like. If I'm in witness protection and the, the guys that I'm hiding out from find me, it's fucking highway time, everybody. Like, we're not, there is no next day for Christy to have a, a fun, a, for Kat to have a fun time with Vanilla Ice. We are on the highway that fucking night. And to yes. your point, dude, about that, that's why later in this movie, when this fucking, the younger son is kidnapped by these guys, it's like, Wait a second, Michael Gross. You and your wife fucking went to work. <laughs> yes, yep. I know. <laughs> and you left this kid at like Little League and your teenage daughter was supposed to pick him up and you come home. You've been grocery shopping <laughs> like the fucking cops are after well, you. Well, Kathy, I, the quarterly payments are due. What do you want me to do? Oh, I, I got I got this mixed up. I'm Michael Gross. I thought it was Michael Grocery. Oh, oh my God. God. That's wow. <laughs> It's good. <laughs> Eat it, pigs. It's quarantine time. <laughs> now, here's, your, here's your podcast slop. <laughs> exactly. I know how you like it. Extra sloppy. <laughs> this is where Michael Gross has a, like, a little confrontation with the missus. And she's like, we have to tell her. 
And so he has just like this fucking hilarious mondo. This is this was the scene where I noticed all the fish in the fishbowl. Yes, yeah, so it was a hundred of them. He's like, uh, my name was James Hackett. James Anthony Hackett and tells this whole thing about they were Jimmy and Sarah Hackett and he was a fucking rad ex cop the whole thing and the funny thing is like at the end of it she's like but why can't I see Vanilla Ice I my my reality has been she, like she gets over this pretty quickly like the fact that her, everything she's been told is a fucking lie that your last name is fake <laughs> yep your parents aren't who they've been telling you they are for the last 18 years. It's quite amazing. You're, you got a secret Serpico in your house. <laughs> <laughs> it's a secret bit Serpico, of a thing. Better movie. Oh, man. Uh, oh, so then because of this and because of Michael Gross's suspicions, he's like, oh, and by the way, your fucking friend Vanilla Ice, uh, Johnny, is involved with them. So you got to stay away from them. And so the next morning, like they've they've tentatively made plans to go fuck in the field again. <laughs> and instead, like Kat tells Johnny that it's over with. And, you know, he there's this kind of great shot where like Vanilla Ice is just pushing this motorcycle backwards to follow her down the sidewalk. <laughs> and like he just goes back to the house where his friends have been staying in hell with these old people <laughs> who are like just pound. And again, like it's it's so like art film ask the way that they're playing these doofuses they're like pounding at this fucking motorcycle with toasters trying to fix it it's like so bizarre i just don't know what uh mr kellogg was going for here <laughs> I, it's like it's truly something and at this point i should i should mention something i wanted to uh talk about with the interior design of this house the fucking living room that has like a motivational lines like all over written all over the walls oh, yeah. and the furniture there's just like fucking sentences painted on the walls what is that sure. what is pure madness fucking tim robbins house <laughs> <laughs> it's just like it's so we're like someone just like vomited and that was the fucking production design for this house it's totally crazy um, they have another montage where Vanilla Ice is like brooding while, you know, Kat tries to go hang out with her friends and they're like, oh, you you should talk to Nick and try to get him back, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> oh, I think Michael Gross had a line like, like Nick was hospitalized. Yes, oh, right. Amazing. For a broken <laughs> nose, apparently. <laughs> uh, so Johnny comes back to the house and the little boy Tommy is there and he's like, oh, you know, cat went out or whatever but you promised me a ride on that motorcycle and he takes this kid out and it's kind of funny because they see nick like in his corvette and they the kid like gives him the finger well here's the thing this kid comes up to him and he's like yo what's up and he's like yeah i told everybody i was supposed to be at little league but i'm with you let's go on your motorcycle and i'm like nah <laughs> son you got to go back to your parents because if i took you anywhere that'd be kidnapping <laughs> or, or, or so i understand it from the rules i read on my space uh, way here <laughs> <laughs> like it's totally illegal to take a kid somewhere without his parents knowing it's not all right the kid hey, doesn't get to make that decision little man call me when you're 18 and then i'll still <laughs> talk about your mommy and daddy to you <laughs> <laughs> yeah they go off and he uh, he does give him the the middle finger he, he, this is when he gives himself this horrific haircut it's not even a haircut it's like he just puts like gel in it yeah it's disgusting is what it is this kid looks disgusting fresh cut little man says uh <laughs> rip van winkle <laughs> and he's like oh yeah you like it johnny i did it myself and vanilla ice is like yeah i can tell can we talk about <laughs> I, I, I think it's in the what do you call it scene the 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 uh construction scene when they're they're flirting it's like well so what's your what's your real name johnny what and he goes I think she says, "Oh, so your name is Johnny?" And like it's this weird, like fucking Kill Bill Volume One shit, where they don't say his name properly, and I don't he's, uh, understand it. It turns out he's Johnny Rockets. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't know what, why we are going to such lengths to make this guy like so mysterious. Like it just, it doesn't make any sense. Uh, but so he drops the kid off. And when he does, he, like, uh, uh, Kathy has uh, given him this ring that she had. And she, you know, when she gives it to him, she's like, yeah, well, this is something that Nick doesn't have. 
So like he sneaks into her room and drops it in the fish bowl and kind of like bounces. Yeah. Another breaking and entering. Yep. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah, we're no longer married, or so I understand it. <laughs> From your what? primitive earth culture. What ring was this? It was just a ring that she was wearing. Oh, okay. That she just, just like you. some jewelry she had. God, yeah. I don't want your great grandmother's trash. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, I don't care if this came from the old country. I'm going to throw it in this fishbowl. Am I supposed to eat this? <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's great food for you. <laughs> uh, and so this is the, so nobody's supposed to be home, I guess, is the idea. And these fucking corrupt cops come in, break into the house. They're threatening the kid. And he's like, I'm going to call 911. I saw it on America's Most Wanted. And this other guy who's definitely in a fucking totally different movie yes. is like, oh, yeah? Did you see the one that I was on? And I'm like, what are you doing? <laughs> it is he says, totally he disturbing. That. And he pulls out the phone wire. It's amazing. It's amazing performance by this man. It is so <laughs> scary. It is so, so scary. Uh, so they fucking kidnap him. They kidnap him, and she comes home, and she's, like, flopping all over the house. She finds the ring immediately somehow. She's like, I guess she checks her fishbowl for rings every day. And she's just like, <laughs> you know, she's just a sad, moody teen, blah, blah, blah. And again, yeah, the parents come back with, like, groceries. They rented videos. They're just, like, Dude. they're in for the, They're just hanging. They will not be deterred by this by their past life catching up with them. I guess that's what they learned. I mean, I get it, dude. It's like the dumbest fucking move. Like, it, there should be, you know, and maybe there is. I don't know. I've never had to be in witness protection uh, that yeah. you know of. <laughs> oh. Um, but, like, oh. you know, maybe there's, like, a binder, like, a break-in-case-of-emergency binder. And it's, like, if the people who were originally threatening your life show back up at your house, uh, here's a number that you can call, and we'll get you out of there, and you know, whatever else. There was some line about, like, like oh, did you call the marshal or whatever? He's like, well, yes, I did. Nothing <laughs> happened. <laughs> it was some weird, like... It, it seems like they maybe implied that they yeah. tried that. And hey, you got work. Marshall McCathers. I, uh, I'm out of the office this weekend, and if your life is in danger, just uh, wait till Monday. I'll talk to you later. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, we swear we would have called, but we have a game night with the Johnsons on Friday. <laughs> <laughs> uh, listen, gentlemen, could you extort $500,000 from me perhaps next week? It's more convenient. <laughs> we have a game night with the Johnsons. <laughs> uh so uh the 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 two guys the two crooked cops have left an envelope on the doorstep so this is another like vanilla ice shows up at the front door picks it up this to is just my be favorite like, part you know like oh yeah i'm giving this to you uh you know but again like you should you i mean he doesn't know to specify this because he doesn't know he's under suspicion in that way but i would be like this was on your doorstep <laughs> exactly you know yes, yes. right when i got here so i'm now not giving it to you now it's like mistaken identity type of thing but right before that he was convinced to go over by his 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 group of uh followers i guess because he's kind of a david koresh as well and the <laughs> the proprietors of this garage question mark house and they they say like you can't leave without saying goodbye you got to go say goodbye to her you got to give her a real goodbye we got to go to the next <laughs> planet dude the next uh <laughs> the next system needs us so he fucking takes off after this and they listen to this fucking tape oh is it funny and it's it is so this kid chilling. he's being forced to read his own fucking hostage tape oh god and he's I like, am doing well, Father. How are you, Mother? Yep. I am being fed well. And it's like, oh, if you come, if you give them what they want, I'll come home. If you don't, I won't. And I'm like, hey, cool <laughs> as ice, awesome. <laughs> it was at especially the reading of this hostage tape, the listening of this hostage tape, that I was like, I was really fucked up. The only other time I saw this movie, I don't remember this at all. Uh, so they are they freak the fuck out. Nick comes by and he says, and again, this is another wrong man situation. He's like, oh, I saw Tommy a little while ago. Uh, he was with Vanilla Ice on the motorcycle. Uh, so this like cements Michael yeah. Gross's position that Vanilla Ice is, you know, in on it with the two cops. Uh, but she takes the fucking tape to Vanilla Ice and friends 
and has them listen to it. And this is like Vanilla Ice has the audacity to tell this lady that she needs to see a psychiatrist. Amazing. <laughs> that's, she, that's right when she shows up. She shows up and she's like, Johnny, I need to talk to you. You need to talk to a psychiatrist. Yeah. Oh my God. It is fucked up. <laughs> And then, like, fucking George C. Scott and the Changeling re-listening to this fucking tape over and over again. And he's like, yo, what's that sound on the tape? You hear that banging sound? <laughs> and he's, like, rewinding it and playing it. No, 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 shut up, listen, I think a ghost is on this tape. <laughs> yo, 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 computer, enhance. <laughs> he's like Travolta in Blowout. Is that an <laughs> owl I see in the background? <laughs> <laughs> okay, let me, let me count it down. Hoot, hoot, hoot. <laughs> Puncture sound. Tire screeching. Car goes over bridge. Bam, it hits that water. Yeah, so obviously the stranger to the town can pinpoint the location of by course. sound. Yep, well, it's absolutely. The, it's the one place you fucked, Eric, so he always remembers that. <laughs> That's how the scene starts, and it's so awkward when you're watching it because you're watching this piece of machinery yes. like slam into like a metal panel on the ground, and it happens repeatedly as they're like driving up, and you're like, what is the point of that? And it's only so at the end of this movie, you, the audience member, sitting in the theater during opening weekend of Cool as Ice, <laughs> can be like, oh, shit. The kids at the construction site. Well done, Detective Ice. <laughs> Dude, Detective Ice, better movie. Absolutely. Totally. I'm new on the force. Yo, he could have been in a movie with, like, fucking Jim Belushi or some shit where they're two, two fuck-up detectives. The Absolutely. Only, the only thing I remember him also being in is uh, one of the Sandler movies. He's in That's My Boy. Yep. Okay. In what I'm told is a very extensive role. I've never seen that movie. Well, he's, I mean, we talked about it a little bit. He's also in uh, the same year, by the way, Ninja Turtles 2. Yes. Ooh. That's the uh, best, better, movie. best movie. Yeah. Better movie, yeah, for sure. It's just kind of crazy that they are at the same year because you'd figure, like, somebody, you know, a producer on this movie would have seen him in Ninja Turtles 2, and then it's like, oh, he could be in a movie. <laughs> but, I mean, same year. That's that's very it was surprising. Just everyone wanted to get it because it was, that song was huge. It was huge the year before, and it's like, that's that guy's going to be it. He's right. it. They I mean, tried yeah. to push him, and then it got gave way to this, and they're like, nah. Yeah. <laughs> Never mind. I mean, that would reinforce the alien thing for Kathy. Yo, I'm friends with talking turtles. <laughs> 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 yeah, that's actually true. Uh, uh, so, yeah, he realizes that, you know, he's like, oh, to the construction site, motorcycle gang. Yo, should we call the cops? Absolutely not. <laughs> So they go up there and like they the machine isn't turned on, so they can't find the clanking noise or whatever. And so then it's like these two goons have this kid in an unfinished house and they're like, you know, this uh what's his name? Jack McGee, whatever the actor is, is like, uh, you know, oh, there you are, my pretty babies. Yeah, look <laughs> at you on your sexy motorcycles. Yeah, can't find us without the clanging can you? Yo, yo, yo Marcy, uh, turn around. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah, the motorcycles. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh. Don't look, Morrissey. Don't turn around. <laughs> Morrissey has a great line around here about how the fat's gone to your head because he gets paranoid and he's like hearing something. But he's also like, I'm going to, he's just taunting this child. I'm going to kill you. I'm going to kill you. <laughs> yeah, that's actually pretty great because, like, there's no lights on. It's an unfinished house. So these dudes just have flashlights and he's like flashing it in the kid's face, like, Woo, who's going to get killed? <laughs> who's going to get their face cut off? And it's like, again, dude, someone tell the guy playing Morrissey that this isn't fucking seven. Show him home alone. Like, you're Daniel Stern. That's what you're doing. You have to be goofy and garish. Absolutely. And it was just the year before. Guaranteed the actor S.A. Griffin playing Morrissey fucking saw that movie. Although this is what Kevin McAllister deserved. Oh, for sure. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> oh, so I love it, man. Just fucking out of nowhere, these motorcycles drive through this drywall. It is hysterical. And there's another fight scene. It's re it's even worse than the first one. I don't know. It takes an hour for some reason. <laughs> This is like two dudes versus three guys. Three, you know, three guys. The, the, game over. That, you got it. And that's he the, kind of kicked him again. Oh, no. Well, oh, wait, no. He's kind of kicking him again. That's what's insane, though, is that in that first fight scene, uh, Vanilla Ice beats the shit out of everyone in that fight circle. Like, yes. very swiftly, single-handedly, whatever. And they're, like, young dudes, right? And so, like, 
this scene, he's fighting Morrissey, this fucking 50 year old dude. And he's kind of getting his ass kicked. And I was like, no, you can't do it that way. Like if he, if he very swiftly beats up these young guys, this guy's no fucking match for vanilla ice. Yeah, there needs to be a gun. There needs to be a knife, something. Yep. yep exactly. They're shown the, to have guns. I don't know why they yeah. don't use them. No, a gun is not fired in this movie. You got to keep that PG 13 dude. Uh, which is weird also because this movie was universal, so it's not like a thing where it was like Touchstone Pictures, which is like actually owned, you know, it's like a Disney thing, and you know, we got to keep shit like those are like the secret Disney pseudo adult movies. Like, this has been going around because like Splash is on Disney Plus and they edited out Daryl Hannah's ass at the end of it. Mm-hmm. Oh, I saw that, that's really stupid, dude. They give, <laughs> did you see it though? Like, the clip yeah. they give her, like, it's a digitally. They like digitally lengthen her hair. Why are we like? Why are we making like a? We're stigma, stigmatizing asses now. Like, an ass doesn't necessarily have to be a sexual delight. Sure, it, you, can, it can be, but but if, but it doesn't have to be. Look at Larry the Cable Guy's entire comedy career. Exactly, you're not blurring <laughs> him out. And I it, guarantee, <laughs> if Disney Plus acquired all the Larry Cable Guy movies, they would even add crack. Hey, cool! I'm blurred out. And guess what, dude? You don't get to if you if you you don't like the ass in in Splash, you don't get to show the movie. How about that? You know what I yes. mean? Like, yep, Mister. Th- yep. That's it, Mister. Movie I- is ass, Mister. Iger, why you watch it, Mister. Iger. We, ha- we we have to keep the butts. No, no, we have to. It's it's part of the movie. No, they don't exist. <laughs> butts no don't if, exist. No ifs, ands, or buts, and I mean it. That extends to actual <laughs> buttocks. <laughs> B U T S and B U double T S. <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, so like Jack McGee gets his fucking head thrown through the wall by the the gang, which is pretty cool. And uh, did I catch this right? Does Vanilla Ice kick Morrissey in the balls at the end of this? Uh, it looks I like he. It. Maybe. it looks like it could easily be, you know, uh, taken as like a kick to the stomach. But it looks like he fucking lifted his leg up and stamped this dude I, right in the oh balls. Man, I gotta rewatch it. Thankfully, I bought it on Amazon. Straight <laughs> up buy. I, why did you buy it, dude? I was able it's to rent class, it. Classic film. <laughs> dude, if you thought it was so classic, you would buy some fucking disc media, my friend. <laughs> That's fair. I, I'm thinking it doesn't happen because I don't remember the cartoon bird sound being played at any time. <laughs> or like or like a boing. boing, boing yeah. Boing. <laughs> or just like, nerds. Yeah, exactly. You're gonna get a nerd <laughs> in there. Oh my god! <laughs> he hit it. my balls. He hit my balls. <laughs> I would love in one of these movies. It's it's a totally regular kids comedy movie, right? And like that's fun. He gets a fucking sledgehammer in the nuts. The boy yoing sounds, and like you keep expecting him to get up, but he's like bleeding through his mouth. I can't make it. I, I fucking can't make it. Oh, dude, does like does like the testicles come out of his mouth? <laughs> exactly. He just dies on the floor. <laughs> because the balls, the balls, the balls, it's the balls that'll bring us together. It's, it's like yeah. it's like Quint when he gets the second bite. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just screaming as blood comes out of the sides of your mouth. No, no. <laughs> it's like, well, everything in Cool as Ice was PG up until that <laughs> happened, and now it's a hard R rating. Yeah, you gotta get it somehow. Better it's, movie, man. It, it still all appears on Disney Plus, but it's blurred. <laughs> <laughs> so he brings everybody back, and everyone, and like Michael Gross is like, well, I guess I was wrong about you. And he, like, yep. they shake hands, and he's like, yeah, whatever. Dude, it's actually kind of a fucking confusing line or whatever, because he's like, uh, uh, like Michael Gross apologizes to Vanilla Ice and says thanks. And Vanilla Ice just goes, doesn't really matter. <laughs> yeah, I yeah, don't know what that means. I was like, <laughs> what? I mean, I get it. He's an alien. He's still trying to get a grasp on the English language. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Hey, daddy, means, thank daddy, you. now you owe me $500,000. Oh, oh, shit. And the, and the VIG is running, dude. Absolutely. Yo, this movie hasn't had a clock until right now. That bitch is ticking. <laughs> uh, it's it's good for you. My planet's currency is ketchup. <laughs> That's well, why I came down here. I'm a billionaire. Oh, wow. This is perfect. I'm Michael Grocery, and I happen to have ketchup. <laughs> Uh yeah, so then the, Michael Gross is like, you know, oh, uh, not too late now, fucking this grown man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Uh, and they kind of have a little conversation here. Uh, and she goes, uh, he says something like, yeah, well, aren't you going off to college? And she's like, college doesn't start tomorrow, smart ass. To which he replies, then let's G-O. Yeah. Ugh. Oh, yeah. I meant jerk. Oh, is that jerk off? Is jerk off with a G? <laughs> Yo, oh, only shit, losers say, say go. <laughs> it should be longer. <laughs> Yo, you're a school girl. I'm going to teach you the alphabet. <laughs> and uh, Nick shows up just to be like, what is going on here? <laughs> <laughs> and he says he's got, he, there's a great exchange right here, actually, with him and Vanilla Ice, because he's like, he's like, He's like, all right, Kathy, well, you know what? You're never going to see me again if you go off on that hoodlum's motorcycle or, like, whatever it is. And he just goes, imagine that, <laughs> and fucking drives off. He drives off, and then he's like, I hope you enjoy being a biker chick or whatever. And it's like, that's not what a biker chick, whatever, man. Fine. And then, like, <laughs> Vanilla Ice goes, hold on. I just realized I got to end the movie. And he drives back <laughs> around, and he uses Nick's car to do another sick jump. Uh, it's pretty fun. It's pretty fun, and he doesn't scare the living daylights out of a horse this time. <laughs> oh, that horse has to ends... be killed, by the way. Oh, yeah, that horse is definitely dead. Definitely. Uh, and then it just ends with another music video. We don't know where this is, but it, it's it's in it's in the narrative because she's there, and she's like, I'll call it iced out. You know what I mean? Like she's absolutely, been, she's been dressed conservatively this whole film, very like wholesomely, and now she's got like a cool, you know, fly girl's haircut kind of a thing going on. Absolutely. She's got some makeup on. She's wearing, like, a tight dress. She's at a Vanilla Ice concert. She's finally her own person, just living <laughs> under the thumb of another boyfriend. <laughs> well, listen, you got to meet my parents on my home planet. You got to dress like us. <laughs> and what I realized, actually, as this movie uh, ended right here, was that as the movie's dumb fucking mafia or f corrupt cop child kidnapping thing like really kicks into high gear there's there's a long stretch of this movie where there's no uh vanilla ice dancing or singing yes. and you're like wait a second they should have just made this like a full on vanilla ice musical movie where they're really punching in songs and dance numbers and shit because you just lose sight of it and then it's like Oh yeah, I forgot. He kind of like sings and dances in this movie a little bit. I mean, That's right. these... they they should pepper it throughout for sure. This should be like a staple. It should be like Blues Brothers or yes, or yes, John exactly. Waters' but... Cry Baby or something. I mean, this... totally. I don't. That, that's the thing. I don't understand why Kellogg would disown this. This is essentially a reel. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's, like... it's a really good looking reel, yeah. also. So why would you? Did you guys sit through the end credits? Uh, I did, yes. The uh, I just wanted to mention the be cool, stay in school at the very end. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> and school is spelled S K O. Yeah, yeah. Wait, it's O, it's not O's. <laughs> not uh, O's. Not on our planet, Eric. Yeah, we're in isolation. Are, I'm going crazy. Are you sure that wasn't just a, a plug for uh, Skull? <laughs> <laughs> Yo, stay in Skull, chewing tobacco. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's kind of funny to misspell every word of "be cool, stay in school." <laughs> oh man, you actually just reminded me of the I did chewing tobacco one time and almost vomited. Yeah, I can't, and I never, little, never did. It I was the worst fucking thing. I because I had a buddy who used to do it, and he was like, "You just gotta try it sometime, man." And I was like, "All right," and I did. I got like super lightheaded immediately and almost vomited, and I was like, "This is not for me." It's, they call it like the dip, right? Yeah, yeah dude, that's exactly dips. what it was. You get you you tap that little canister, you get a little dip there, and it's just like pure nicotine hitting fast, right? Yep, that's exact. And do, yeah, because you, you're getting that like you know all the stuff's going like sublingually and whatever. And I was like, "No, thank you." No, you ba do some chewing marijuana. Yeah, well, that's that's a different story. No, baby, we have to dip. That's the only way we can breathe on my planet. <laughs> <laughs> when I dip, you dip, we dip. Nice. P planet skull. <laughs> would uh, would anybody recommend this movie? Because that's the fucking end of it By all. Way, that'd be the planet of ugly smiles. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's, that's look at the big butt. A skull <laughs> smile. <laughs> I would. Um, it's a seeing is believing for sure. It's one and done. Really has to be after. It's like it's gremlin rules, but it's like kind of reverse. Like it has to be after midnight. Uh, yeah. You have to have consumed something or, you know, you're just having a fun time. I don't know. 
I'm not telling anyone to, to break edge here, but it's it, it's it, that's the only way to watch this film. I don't, it, it it's it goes without we we haven't touched on it that much how bad of an actor he is and like barely fills the frame, doesn't know how to look at things or breathe properly. Like it just, <laughs> all of it, every time he's on screen, you're like, wow, this is just ill fitting. Uh, so yeah, it's it's a recommend for me. Uh, Eric Siska. Oh, it's an absolute recommend. It is seeing is believing. It's fun. I think this would be great with a lot of people, but that's illegal. So um, <laughs> if there's like a Zoom or some way to do that, I would recommend it. I mean, obviously, imbibe all you can. For some people, that's chewing tobacco. Some people, that's smoking wacky tobacco. And for some people, it's drinking. And for you at home, it's nothing. <laughs> Just because I want, because I agree with Steve, we got to. We got to show, you know, tell people you don't have to do this stuff to have fun, folks. True. Be cool. Stay in school. Uh, Chris Gap. <laughs> oh, absolutely. You have to see this thing. Um, it's, I mean, all the oddity of it, you know, it being Janusz Kaminski who, uh, who shot it and uh, watching him be an actor, which is amazing to behold. Um, it's, it's all worth it. Uh, it, it. It's complete nonsense and, you know, incoherent. But, uh, yeah, it's totally worth seeing. I will say uh, Sober Andrew at 11.30 this morning watching this movie, absolutely not. What a fucking supreme waste of time. This is terrible. It's incompetently made. Yes, it looks good, but everything about it is awful. Uh, Andrew, eight years ago, fucking stoned off his ass. And, you know, Andrew stoned off his ass any other time. Absolutely. <laughs> Uh, I think, though, uh, to Eric's point about seeing it in a group, that really helps. If you guys want to get, yeah, a Zoom party, like a watch party going on. Uh, this movie, I don't think, is on Netflix, so you can't go that route. But it's on Amazon Prime. And maybe set something up with your friends and check out the movie. Because uh, otherwise, it is just fucking insufferable. Um, but I do remember the first time seeing it having a blast with all three of you in the room, <laughs> <God> Steve. <damn> it. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, other I just I just can't sanction his fucking buffoonery otherwise. <laughs> or in watching Ninja Turtles 2 Secret of the Ooze, you get your fucking fill of him for sure. Better Don't worry movie about it. for sure. Plus Ninja Turtles. <laughs> uh, but with that, that is Cool as Ice from 1991, directed by uh, music video directing pornographer David Kellogg. <laughs> Whatever, man. Everybody's got to make a living. Mm -hmm. If you want more We Hate Movies, check out whmpodcast.com or head over to patreon.com slash we hate movies. Tons of bonus content flying around that thing this month. We got uh, John Carpenter's The Thing for our exclusive We Love Movies episode. Uh, what are we doing for the uh, the April animation damnation? We did a gum Gumby, my friend. That's right. Gumby. I forgot. I forgot. It's already the middle of the month. Yeah. I'm like, surely we haven't released animation damnation yet, but it is out. It is Gumby. That is a fucking wild ride. Qui-Gon Jinn on the Gleep Glossary. That's our, our, our show. We talk about Star Wars characters. It's a lot of fun and that one gets a little crazy that one gets really <laughs> crazy we also did uh we got our, ne our regular scheduled nexus and back from the dead chris cabin what feature did we bring back we're bringing back side order of sleaze oh yeah oh yeah, yes. oh, yeah. an episode on the exterminator 1980 is coming to you pretty wonderful little movie honestly I, yeah. I'm watching it in like T minus 10 minutes. So we'll, I'll let you know. <laughs> Although I probably already saw it. Um, this is, I'm, I'm telling you right now, Steve, this is a movie that I know for a fact we watched at the Astoria apartment. God damn it. But no, Steve, no, here's the thing. For that side order of sleaze, I will be you because I know that I've seen this movie, but I have no idea what happens in it. Um, no, this it's something something Vietnam veteran. Uh -huh. <laughs> See, that's it. All that's those, all I got for you. There's those, a dude who was in Vietnam. All those are at various different tiers. Check out uh, patreoncom slash to figure out which is which. But eight dollars gets you everything, including a Justice League commentary and a ton of other shit. You better believe it. And also, we should mention that the dude who wrote this movie also wrote the third episode of a little show called Beverly Hills 90210. Oh. He is the guy responsible for writing the first episode with Dylan McKay and at the Green Room, which we covered on our brand new main feed show, Melrow 210. It's a quarantine podcast we're doing on the free feed to give you guys a little something extra during this crazy time. Uh, and every Monday, we are talking about a Beverly Hills 90210 episode. And every Thursday, we are talking about a Melrose Place episode. Uh, so check that out. That's on the free feed. Isn't uh, that funny, though, that like 
it really shows you how important the performer is. You get this guy writing cool young dude dialogue. Luke Perry nails it. Yes. Yeah. Yep. yeah. Fucking vanilla ice. Forget about it. <laughs> Absolutely. Now, Steve, as far as uh, you haven't said otherwise, I feel you would have brought it up by now. At no point was there a vanilla ice cameo on Beverly Hills. No, the now? closest you get is color me bad, which is a pretty good. Oh, episode. oh, interesting. I'll look forward to that. Uh, but so, uh, Oh, also speaking of the free feed, though, of course, as like every Tuesday here at We Hate Movies, the show rolls on uh, even through this quarantine time. So, Steve, uh, what are we talking about next week? Quarantine announcement, ladies and gentlemen. Things are changing <laughs> around here for the next uh, for the month of May. Uh-huh. Oh, oh. Da, 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 da. I forgot. I forgot. Technically, this should be the start of the summer blockbuster extravaganza. Yeah, no? usually summer blockbuster extravaganza starts in June, but we want to, you know, everybody's fucking going out of their mind at home so we want to start a little early get the party going and we're doing it by doing every single pirates of the caribbean movie back to back to back all the way through the first week of june so oh. fuck you everybody we're doing yeah, it. yeah. yeah. you, you got to deal with that if you don't want to uh patreon there's a lot of bonus episodes you can listen to instead yeah, uh, but absolutely, dude. And, you know, starting next week for the next five weeks, We Hate Movies hits the high seas, my friend. <laughs> oh, yeah, we're getting shipwrecked. Oh, dude, I guarantee <laughs> you by week two, I'll be fucking sick of it. <laughs> oh, I, I, I've only seen three of these and I hate them. Yeah. So this is, it's going to be truly something. Uh, I remember kind of liking that first one when it came out because I was like, oh, this is a fun adventure movie. I'm kind of into it. But then, man, did this, this series sink. So I'm excited to kind of <laughs> dig into this thing again. Absolutely. I haven't seen any of these movies in years, so it's going to be really something. Uh, but until next week with Pirates of the Caribbean, The Curse of the Black Pearl, I'm Andrew Jupin. Steven Sadak. Eric Siska. Chris Gavin. Take it easy. That was a HeadGum Podcast. <laughs>